A couple of months ago, I made a video about Outer Wilds, an open world space exploration game. I said in that video that it reignited my love for gaming because it showed me what this art form is capable of, even though I hadn't finished the game yet. And it became my most watched and most liked video ever. Thank you to everyone who liked or even watched the video. I loved reading your positive comments. Also thank you to the people who left a negative comment. It's really helpful to know which parts of my video could be better, and I think we can all learn a lot from negative criticism. So thank you, I love you guys. You guys told me three things in the comments. You told me that the ending is incredible, that the DLC is amazing and that I should play it, and that I should make a follow-up video when I finish the game. I finished the game, and yeah, you guys were totally right. This game shook me to my core. It made me feel emotions I hadn't felt in years, and it made me a better person by the end. So I think Outer Wilds deserves a second video. In this video, I will be talking about why Outer Wilds is the best open world game possibly ever. Then we'll talk about the first few hours in the game. After that, I want to tell you guys about my new favorite part of the game outside of the ending. And lastly, we'll be talking about the ending. This video will not cover Echoes of the Eye, because I think it deserves its own video. Also, stop watching the video right now if you haven't played Outer Wilds. Why the fuck did you click on this video if you haven't finished the game? Outer Wilds is a once in a lifetime experience, because you can literally finish the game in 20 minutes if you solve the mystery. I will be spoiling the mystery, so go away. The first part will be relatively spoiler free, but I still recommend you turn off this video right now if you haven't finished Outer Wilds. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is the open world genre. Because Mobius understands open world games so well that I just have to talk about it. But to understand why Outer Wilds is the perfect open world game, we have to go back to the early days of gaming, the good old days. The appeal of a video game used to be the interactiveness. Instead of watching a movie or reading a book, you could play a game and make your own story. Games are the most immersive art form in my opinion, because you are such a big part of the game. You are the one deciding what's gonna happen next. Not some random writer, no, you. You create your own stories instead of experiencing someone else's. I think that's why gaming became as successful as it is today. But technology kept improving, which meant that the quality of games also kept improving. Artists were able to make the things they really wanted to make, because the technology of their time was no longer hindering them from doing so. But just like with the prequels, that's not always a good thing. Games became more narrative focused, and this made them lose their original charm in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of incredible narrative focused games out there. God of War is one of my favorite games of all time. I just feel like games began to feel like movies with interactable elements in them. I am clearly not the only one with that opinion, because the gaming industry already had two solutions to this problem. The first one being multiplayer games. This was a great idea, because it gave the players freedom to create their own stories with people around the world. But the second solution were open world games. A type of game where you get put in a world without a goal and it lets you do whatever you want. It's a genius idea, because it encourages players to explore the world in their own way. It forces the players to find the goal of the game and it makes making your own stories inevitable. And it worked. The gaming industry realized how important it was to give players freedom and more and more games started adding open worlds. But that's the problem. They were adding open worlds, not becoming open world games. A bunch of narrative focused games started adding open worlds with some side quests, but that's just not how it works. The appeal of an open world game is that you can do anything you want. You create your own stories, but these quote unquote open world titles already have a story. The only thing that has changed is the distance you have to walk to get from one mission to the next. Exploring the world isn't rewarding, because you have to follow a linear path to finish the game, so exploring feels like a waste of time. The main story missions will obviously be the best ones, because they are the ones that you have to do to finish the game, but this also means that the side quests always feel like a step down from the normal missions. This is why I don't like most open world games. The gaming industry doesn't understand their own creation. Even a game like Zero Dawn, which has some of the most unique and well executed world building I've ever seen isn't a good open world game in my opinion. It's a good game with an open world. You don't have to explore if you don't want to. You can just follow the markers on the map until you have beaten the game. Open world games have failed, and yet there are some games that have managed to use their open worlds the right way. Games like GTA, Ark, Goat Simulator, and of course Outer Wilds. These games fix the entire genre, 
by asking a very simple question. What do you want to do? Every good open world game asks this question to the player. The goal of the game should be what the player wants it to be. If you want to steal eggs in a wyvern trench to create your own army of dragons in Ark, then Ark lets you do that. If you want to fly around using a hentai car, then GTA lets you. If you want to paraglide off a mountain as a goat, then Goat Simulator lets you. These three titles do an incredible job at letting the player decide what they want to do next. But I would argue that Outer Wilds does it better than all of these other titles I just mentioned. Why? Because exploring the solar system is necessary to finish the game. Exploration in Outer Wilds is so rewarding that the entire progression system is based on it. Let's say you go to Brittle Hollow, you see the painting with the quantum towers, and then you realize that one of those stars is on this planet. You try to get there, but you get sucked into the black hole. When you get to the white hole station, you see parts of Brittle Hollow flying around. Then you go to the white hole station, you get back to Brittle Hollow, and then you fly into the sun because your autopilot is evil. You just went to Brittle Hollow because you thought it looked cool, and you learned like 10 things by just doing whatever you wanted to do. Usually, open world games are fun because you have the freedom to do whatever you want. But Outer Wilds is one of the only games I know that actually rewards you for doing that. Outer Wilds also does something incredible, with something that has something to do with its open world, but I'll talk about that when we get to the game's ending. Okay, now let's talk about the first few hours. So you start the game off on Timber Herd. The first hour of this game is just brilliant. You wake up and you see something doing something at Giant's Deep. You don't know what it is or why it's there, but it hooks the player immediately. You look down and you see a campfire and a four-eyed friend. This perfectly sets the tone for the first part of the game. Your buddy tells you to go and get the launch codes on the other side of the village. And from now on, you can do whatever you want. The first thing you learn in Outer Wilds is that exploration and curiosity gets rewarded. You only do a tutorial if you explore the area. You can play hide and seek to learn how your signal scope works. You can go into a cave to find out how zero G and repairing works. You can use the little drone to find out how your spaceship works. But none of those things are necessary. You have to explore the village to find them, which is just genius. Every part of the tutorial also feels like it's a part of the world. You don't just get a pop-up saying, press this button to use the signal scope. No, you use your signal scope because you're playing hide and seek, and you can track the kids with the signal scope. It's probably the best tutorial I've ever played in a video game. A weird statue from another species looks at you when you leave the museum with the launch codes, and it shows you your own memories. Okay, that was weird. Anyway. You are the first Hartian ever to receive a translator. This lets you translate text the Nomai, the old alien species that made the statue, wrote. They came here to look for the Eye of the Universe, a signal older than the universe itself. They don't live here anymore, but no one knows why they are gone. So equipped with your signal scope and translator, you enter your ship to begin your adventure. But suddenly, the sun explodes. A beautiful leitmotif plays in the background, while the sun becomes bigger and bigger, until it finally explodes. You try to get as far away as you possibly can, but it's already too late. You died. It's over. Or is it? You wake up next to the campfire where you started the game, and the thing on Giant's Deep explodes again. You're in a time loop on the last day of the solar system. You have to find a way to prevent this from happening again, but after 22 minutes, the sun explodes again, and again, and again. Outer Wilds is a game about information. If you don't know why something is happening, then that means that you don't have enough information yet. So you explore as much as you can to find a way to stop the sun from exploding. You learn very early on in the game that every planet has something in its core, something underneath its crust. It's almost always a really important thing on that planet. Sometimes it's very cute, like on Timberherd, but sometimes it's not that. Looking at you, Interloper and Dark Bramble. I love how well the things in the core are built up while still feeling unexpected. The Interloper is a perfect example of this. 
you probably figure out pretty early on in the game that ghost matter comes from these little crystals that you find everywhere. And you probably know they weren't there when the Nomai came to the solar system, because, well, back then they were still alive. Maybe you also found out that the interloper arrived when the Nomai were already in the solar system. So it's definitely possible to put the pieces together yourself. But it still hits incredibly hard when you get to the core of the interloper and read what actually happened. One of the first places you will probably visit is Giant's Deep, the gas giant with a strange thing orbiting around it. You see it every time you wake up, so it has to be important. You try to land on the thing and you can go inside. You find out what this place is and what it's meant for. You did it. The sun explodes again, but you feel better than ever before when you wake up again. I love what the Outer Wilds does here. When you hadn't discovered what the thing was, the waking up sequence was a way to tell the player that there was so much left to explore. And after you know what the thing is, the waking up sequence becomes a way to show the player how far they've come. Seeing the thing after you know what it is, is incredibly motivating. If I got stuck on a puzzle and I started a new time loop, the thing was there to tell me, hey, you figured out how I work, you can do the same thing with this puzzle. The first couple of hours of Outer Wilds are incredible because of how excited the game makes you to play it. Now I'm gonna talk about my favorite part of the entire game. So for the last time, go away if you haven't played Outer Wilds yet. It's like 15 bucks, go buy it and come back once you've beaten it. I've been trying to spoil as little as I can, but I can't really do that when I'm talking about a specific part of the game. So go away. Okay, so my favorite part of the game is meeting Solanum. I don't mean the quantum pilgrimage as a whole. No, just meeting Solanum. So Solanum is a Nomai explorer who went to the quantum moon, a weird moon that moves every time you don't look at it. There are different places in the solar system you can go to learn about the quantum rules to get to the quantum moon yourself. And the coolest thing is that you can read Solanum's mentor's lessons, so it feels like we are there with Solanum while she's learning about the quantum moon. Solanum kind of mirrors the player here, and it immediately feels like we have a connection. Solanum's writings pop up in other places in the game. She wrote something about why she thinks the eye of the universe is evil, because it lured her tribe here. We know she lived in the Hanging City at some point and you can find something in the Sunless City about her. You can discover her entire life story if you want to. And she's one of the most fleshed out Nomai in the game. But the Nomai are gone, so you'll never be able to meet her. The only thing you can do is follow her footsteps. So you also try to learn the quantum rules to get to the quantum moon's version of the Eye of the Universe. The quantum moon orbits a different planet every time you don't look at it. And the quantum moon's surface always turns into the quantum moon's version of the planet it's orbiting. So you can get very close to the eye of the universe if you can find a way to get the quantum moon to orbit it while you're on it. And you figure out how to do that by learning the quantum rules. When you get to the quantum moon for the first time, you see a shuttle. You go in and you find out that the shuttle belonged to Solanum. She came here to visit the quantum moon. You look around for a while, and you see a Nomai body, Solanum's body. She was on the quantum moon, when the interloper did its thing, and it killed her. Every version of the quantum moon is completely different, but Solanum's dead body is almost always there. This hurts. But it also motivates us to finish what she started. You find a way to get the quantum moon to orbit the eye of the universe and... Wait, is, is that Solanum? She's alive! She's actually alive! Or is she? You talk to her and you find out that she herself doesn't know if she's alive or not. This version of Solanum was on the quantum moon when it was orbiting the eye of the universe, while her tribe was dying because of the interloper. The eye of the universe is too far away to get hit by ghost matter, so Solanum is fine. But all of the other quantum versions of Solanum were on the quantum moon when it was in the solar system, while the interloper farted ghost matter. So they died. But none of that complicated stuff matters right now. Because you just found the Nomai you care about most, and she's alive. You can talk to her by combining special stones to show her what you mean, and she will tell you everything she knows. I love the name of some of these stones. Instead of the Nomai rock saying Nomai, it says you. And instead of the Hartian rock saying Hartian, it says me. It doesn't matter that Solanum is a different species than the player right now. In this moment, we are just two friends. Solanum tells you everything she knows about the solar system. The Nomai, and the eye. And this is the game's way of rewarding you for being curious. The quantum voyage is not necessary to finish the game, and it has very little to do with the actual ending, but it's still here for players who really want to explore this world. For players like me. 
This is a side quest, but it never feels like one, because it's such an important part of this world, and the information you get from it is more useful than any item a side quest has ever given me. It was set up perfectly too. If you put a stone with the Ash and Ember twin symbol on a projection pool, you see masks. Three of them are active, which means that three people are in a time loop, because the statues connect to the masks. You are one of the three, and Gabro, another Hartian explorer, is number two. But there is a third person in this time loop, because there is a third mask active. But you don't know who it is, until you realize that it's Solanum. Like, it's insane how well this moment was built up, but you never realize that the game was building up to something. It's like the rock scene and everything everywhere all at once. It's just insane. The Quantum Pilgrimage is just a side quest, and it's not necessary to finish the game. So you don't have to do the Quantum Pilgrimage. But the ending gets infinitely better if you do. The ending of Outer Wilds is the most perfect conclusion to anything I've ever seen in every way possible. But I first quickly want to talk about the multiple other endings. So you have your normal ending, but you also have some other endings that you can get by understanding the rules of the universe. If you get why Solanum didn't die on the quantum moon, you can try to survive the sun exploding in the same way, and maybe you'll find another ending. Hell, if you understand how time works in this universe, you can break time in multiple ways to get secret endings. And when you break time, the credit music becomes a kazoo cover. This is literally the game saying, congratulations, you played yourself. It's fucking insane how this game has the funniest ending ever, but also the most emotional ending ever. The game rewards you for understanding the rules of the universe with extra endings, which is the most Outer Wilds thing ever. Okay, now let's talk about the actual ending. I'm not gonna spoil how you get to the ending, because I know for sure that there is at least one psycho who thinks they don't care about spoilers. Bro, go away, what the fuck are you doing here? Buy Outer Wilds right now. So you take the from the and you bring it to the to get to the and once you jump in, you wake up in the museum. The first place you visit in the game. You return to the museum, because the game wants to show you how far you've come. The last time you were here was to look for information, or to start your journey. But now you're here, because you have all of the information, and this is the end of your journey. But even here, the game keeps rewarding you for your curiosity. If you read the text that previously explained what a statue was, you will notice that the text has changed. It now talks about how you made it to the eye of the universe, and that the Nomai will never know that you did this. The game reminds you that you couldn't have done this without the Nomai, and that you are not the chosen one. You are just the person who finished what the Nomai started. You are not special, yet you are the first person to get here. You don't have to be special to do special things, you just have to be curious. You go up the stairs of the museum, and there is a strange glowing object on the table. The place where you got the launch codes to start your adventure is also the place where you end your adventure. You realize that the glowing object is a representation of the solar system. And then suddenly, there are more of them. This might be the entire universe. And then suddenly, one of the solar systems disappears. The universe is dying. Something a Nomai said in an old message. Turns out they were right. The universe is dying, and your sun was not the only one that exploded. But the most insane part about this is that you cannot do anything about the universe ending. In part 1, I talked about what makes open world games so special. But there was one thing I didn't mention in that part, because it fits here way better. Open world games don't need a goal, because the players should find their own goals. Open world games are about exploration, and about giving the choice back to the player, which is why it's important to let the player choose what they want to do. Of course you can have an end goal, but it's important to encourage the player to find out what they want to do. Outer Wilds plays with this concept, by pretending to give you a goal, and then completely subverting your expectations by saying, that wasn't the goal, stupid. One of the first things the game teaches you is that the sun explodes every 22 minutes. Which makes you think that you have to stop the sun from exploding to save your solar system. But here in the end, the game forces you to watch how the entire universe dies, to tell you that saving the universe was never the goal. The goal was for you to explore and have fun. And you got here not by trying to save the universe, but by being curious. You find yourself in a forest where you find Esker, the old Hartian who lives on the Atoll Rock. He asks you if you hear something, and when you pull out your signal scope, you do. You hear the instruments of the other explorers. You're not alone, as long as you keep exploring. First you find Rebek's guitar, and he's suddenly sitting next to Esker by the fire. And now you hear everyone's instrument. 
But there is something else. Something you haven't heard before. A piano. You look for the other explorers, and you find their instruments with things you learned that have something to do with the other explorers. Gebro's poem was about the quantum moon, so you find his instrument in the sky. Your journey to Feldspar taught you to be brave, and you get this instrument by going towards the anglerfish. Shert told you about the planets, so that's where you find his instrument. And then, there is only the piano left. But you've never met anyone with a piano in the game, so who could this be? You go to the stores of the sound, and you see Nomai. That Nomai, looking at the sky. You know who this piano belongs to. And if it belongs to this person, then that means that it has something to do with the quantum rules. You look away and you look back and you were right. More Nomai appeared. You can now climb on top of the Nomai to get to where you have to be. Which is such a perfect metaphor for the Nomai's role in this story. You could not have done it without them. But they needed you to finish the tower they started. You see the Nomai mask and you knew you were right. You take it and you go back to the campfire where Solanum is waiting for you. You talk to her and she says the most emotional line of dialogue I have ever read. This song is new to me, but I am honored to be a part of it. This is one of those quotes that gives me goosebumps every time. So all of the explorers play a song together, and it's beautiful. This song shows you that the game was literally about the friends we made along the way. And after the song, the universe dies, and you have to let it go. There is nothing you can do about it, so just relax and think back to all of the amazing adventures you had in this awesome world while well, you witness the beginning of a new universe. Sometimes we have to care less about the destination and more about the road that will lead us there. Because everything will end eventually. But that makes the things we did even nicer because of how unique it makes them. The universe will end. But the things we did, our laughs, our cries, will always have existed. This game ended, but our beautiful adventures will always have happened. I think the eye of the universe was a metaphor for our memories and for everything we did. That's why we see the most important people of those memories when we go into it. The eye is older than the universe itself because the previous universe also had people with memories. This proves that the things you do will have always existed, even after the universe itself is gone. The player has one eye more than the Nomai because the eye of the universe has always been with us. We might have been the first person to reach it, but the eye has already reached every single one of us. Everything we do, everything we see, will live on forever, because it's not about what happens when something ends, it's about what you did when you haven't reached that end yet.
Outer Wild is my favorite game ever and words cannot do it justice. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you liked Outer Wilds as well. Echoes of the Eye deserves its own video, but that will take at least two more months because I haven't even finished the DLC yet. I hope your day is going great and I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I always forget to mention this, but I have a Discord server where you can talk about art and other stuff. The server is pretty dead at the moment, but it can be resurrected with your help. So make sure to join the server if you're interested.